the Golden Dome, SpaceX's Golden Cow. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time Without Tea. We actually just have some water here. We're in the room. We're on the ship. We just came back from Greece. Matter of fact, during this video, I'll show you some footage from Greece. It was absolutely gorgeous. The food was fantastic. I actually like the food better in Greece than I did in Rome. Shh, don't tell them. It was really exceptional. We were in Athens and of course we went to go see the Acropolis and the Parthenon and it was just absolutely beautiful. I'm kind of burnt. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So today we're going to be talking about this Golden Dome thing. Now we know Israel has already had the Iron Dome for a long period of time. And I've always said that was kind of like the beta for our Golden Dome. Okay, we've given um, Israel a lot of money, hand over fist, a ton of money. They did a lot of the work, but we gave them a lot of the finances when it comes to the Iron Dome, and we were part of it. So now we kind of get an understanding of it, and we're going to make our own, according to what Donald Trump says, at least. And I was researching this, and I found that SpaceX and Elon Musk is going to have a major role in this. And of course, there, there's no other way to do it, because who has the ability to launch massive numbers of rockets into space? Of course, it's Elon Musk with his reusable Falcon 9s, and eventually the Starship. Right now, the Starship is currently blowing up every time they launch, so let's not look into that. But the Falcon 9s are still doing a fantastic job, an amazing record, and it's reusable. So they constantly are putting satellites on orbit. Well, they've already nodded SpaceX and Elon Musk for this help, let's say, with the Golden Dome. And I was reading a few articles about this. I threw them all together. I want to read this to you so you get an idea of exactly what this is, because you hear about in the news, well, what is it, right? What is it supposed to do? What is it? What is its goal, right? How much is it going to cost? How many satellites are going to be up there? This type of thing. Well, this kind of gets into it. So before I get too deep into the weeds, I just want to say that if you enjoy the content, consider throwing the video a thumbs up. that will be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thank you button right down there. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink specific videos, I've put together over 500 just for you. I'll put a link over here. Don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, click over here and you'll find a whole bunch of helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it, because this channel has always been about the what, the why. The why. The why is more important. Anyways, let's jump right into this article. And then when we're done with this, of course, I'll give you my commentary. But more importantly, down below, I want to hear from you. What do you think about all this? Is this something that we should be moving forward with? Or is this something that we should pull back and save our money? What is your personal opinion on this? I want to know down below. So it starts out by saying Golden Dome. The space shield the world might not be ready for. The United States is laying out the groundwork for the most ambitious missile defense system in history. And it's not on land or sea. It's in orbit, stopping missiles before they fly. Called Golden Dome, this massive space-based project is designed to detect and shoot down missiles during their boost phase. That's very important their boost phase, long before they can deploy warheads or decoys. But this isn't just about launching interceptors. It's a full defense ecosystem, radar stations, AI command systems, and orbital body guards, satellites built to protect the ones that actually do the shooting. Body guards, very cool stuff. Layer one, eyes in the sky. 
Missile launches are detected first by ground-based radar systems like the Long Range Discrimination Radar in Alaska. That data feeds into a space-based sensor network of 400 to 1,000 satellites. These sensors track flight paths in real time and hand target data to interceptor satellites positioned in low Earth orbit. The interceptor phase hit before it hits. Those interceptors expected to range from kinetic kill vehicles to future direct energy platforms would strike missiles during the boost phase when they're easiest to detect and most vulnerable. But those interceptors can't do their job if they're already targeted. The question that some people will have is what exactly is a kinetic kill vehicle in comparison to a future direct energy platform? Well, the difference is, is one will actually launch either a missile from the satellite or maybe metal rods or whatever they have that is kinetic that will kill that launch vehicle. So it could be an ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile or whatever. The other way is this future direct energy platform. That means that on board they have this massive, could be a laser beam that will take out those missiles or maybe some RF or radio frequency microwaves or something to take out the missile in its launch phase. Once again, that initial boost phase. All right, before it can actually break off and you have the warhead going off at supersonic speed. That initial phase is when you want to hit it. It's at its most vulnerable at that time. The article continues. Orbital bodyguards, the untold front line. These support satellites fly patrol around Golden Dome's critical assets. Once again, those interceptors, that's their critical assets. Their job is to monitor for foreign satellites creeping up too close. China and Russia already operate, quote, space stalkers capable of disabling or hijacking systems in orbit. These are specific Chinese satellites that have been put up there to kind of pull up alongside of other satellites. And as they state here, either to disable or to hijack the systems on the satellites, or maybe give them a nudge back into the atmosphere and cause them to burn up. Anything is possible. The bodyguards could blind, block, or nudge those threats away, giving Golden Dome more room to function in a contested environment. So once again, those bodyguards secure the area around those interceptor satellites, which is so, so important so they can do their job. A constellation of thousands. The scale is massive. Experts estimate the system could require anywhere from 10,000 to 16,000 interceptors for global coverage. These will degrade over time, meaning launches must be continuous. This is where SpaceX plays a key role. SpaceX and the Starship Factor. With its Star Shield program and the up and coming Starship platform, SpaceX is expected to handle the bulk of launches. The company is already part of a multi billion dollar contract to deploy the early sensor layer alongside of Palantir and Andril. Launched logistics could require 40 to 60 Starship missions just for the first wave. Global strikes, global reactions. The cost, it's a good question. The initial three year budget is set for $175 billion. Long term costs could approach $1 trillion. Canada declined to join after being asked to contribute $61 billion. France, Japan, Australia and the UK are evaluating involvement. Meanwhile, China and Russia warns this project could provoke a new space arms race, which I guess it could. Defense or escalation? Golden Dome is coming. The real question is, will it protect peace or push the world closer to conflict? I guess that's kind of a good question. I don't know. I don't know. In my personal opinion, like I said at the beginning of this piece, Israel has already had its Iron Dome for quite some time, and it has stopped. It has shot out of air a ton of missiles, 
thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of missiles. Without it, it would have been hit with all of that destructive power. So, is it something that we should have also in the United States? I personally think the answer is yes. Now, how much is it going to cost? Like they're talking about what, 500 billion up to a trillion dollars. It's gonna start out at like 175 billion. Okay, I mean, I get it. First and foremost, they're going to execute plans to put on orbit the bodyguards. Because without the bodyguards, you cannot put these interceptors into space. Because at that point, the interceptors could be intercepted by a Chinese or a Russian satellite and either taken over or blown up or somehow rendered absolutely useless. And at that point, why even bother? So the bodyguard satellites are currently being constructed and placed on orbit. Once those bodyguards are up there, at that point, they can start launching all of these Golden Dome interceptor satellites. Once again, they're saying it's going to be about 10,000 to 16,000 to be able to cover the entire planet. So obviously, Russia and China are not happy about it because now all of a sudden, the balance of power once again is now pushed in the U.S.'s favor, and they don't want to see that, right? They do not want to see that. But in my personal opinion, we just don't know what's going on these days. We see what's happening in Iran. We just dropped, what was it, 17 30,000 pound bombs, bunker busters, on three different enrichment sites. Now, where did all the enriched uranium already go? I don't know. So the possibility of them still producing, let's say, a dirty bomb or producing another type of missile that can reach us is, I would say, pretty good. So if that is the case, we need to have some type of protection. Obviously, this Golden Dome is not going to protect from a dirty bomb, something like just driven into Manhattan and popped, okay? That is not going to protect anything. That's gonna be something that we need to do on the ground. And we need to make sure that we have the appropriate people in office that will actually take on that task because a dirty bomb is something that is very, very difficult to defend against. So when we talk about the Golden Dome, is this something that you believe the U.S. should get involved in or should we not? Should we not spend the money on the Golden Dome or should we? That's really the question. Down below, I want to know your thoughts one way or the other. Why yes? Why no? I'm kind of in the middle. I'm more towards the yes side of it because I realize that there's a lot of people that are just simply not sane and they will do some very bad things and you need to protect yourself from them, right? So, you know, it's, uh, it's important to have the defenses, not just always offense. They always say that offense is the best defense and that is true, but having a really good solid defense prevents the other side's offense from even launching. Because once again, with this Golden Dome, they are actually striking those missiles, let's say the ICBMs, the Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, they are striking them before they even separate. They are striking those missiles in the launch phase before they separate into decoys or the warhead takes off at supersonic speed, right? So you want to be able to get them as close as possible to the initial launch site. And that is exactly what this Golden Dome thing is all about. Once again, kinetic or is it possibly some type of future laser or maybe microwaves? However they do it, I really don't know. But one way or another, they need to be able to, once again, destroy those missiles in air before they separate. And that is exactly what Golden Dome is about. So, once again, what say you down below? I think you know what I think about this. I want to know what you think. If you enjoy the content, like I always say, throw the video a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. And don't forget to head over to my website, jchristina.com forward slash shop. Take a look at my merch. If there's something there that you like, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. Maybe with SpaceX Starlink. We'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.